Help support the Twitchiest community by downloading Guardian Tales, a top-down action RPG, by using the link in the description down below. If we reach 125 downloads and tutorial completions, we'll start another $500 giveaway. At 175 tutorials, we'll make that a $1,000 giveaway. And if we make it to 225 total downloads and tutorial completions, we'll do a full tier list for you guys. So go ahead and download it and start playing today. Hello, everybody. And welcome to your Vulcan, a mid lane guide. We're gonna start off here by grabbing ourselves a good old conduit gem, as well as our tier one magic focus, alpha, and two mana pots, as well as our beads. So Vulcan uh, doesn't get a lot of game play right now. He's not bad. Um, in fact, if you can make it, to um, a like 25 minute plus segment of the game, he can actually be quite good. Um, he still has a very strong late game once you get that full build going, um, but he doesn't have nearly as strong as a early game as is uh, traditionally required in the meta right now. His land clear is okay, it's not great. His early game fight is okay, it's not great. Um, so you don't see a lot of him. And of course, his biggest downfall right now um, as a mid laner is that he doesn't really have a getaway skill. The closest thing that you have is your backfire, uh, which is also your main lane clear ability. Um, and right now the mid lane tends to be a bit of a party lane. So not having a getaway skill can get very scary very fast. But nonetheless, not horrible so the goal is really going to be to get to that mid stage of the game um without having gotten too far behind this is actually not a bad start to trying to do that forcing a little isa ego to now now a pele isa is gonna have a very very strong early fight so i do have to be a little bit careful of getting like blinked on right here by the pele Except for Pele has beads, so we're good. We're not going to get blinked on because she doesn't have blink. That's very good to know. So for Vulcan, at our level one, we're going to grab our one. Then we're going to get our three at level two. Finally grabbing our turret here in just a little bit. Our backfire, which is our one, is primarily going to be used for the actual clearing of the wave. Our three can help us with the wave clear, but it's also mostly going to be used for poking uh, the enemy gods. Really annoying ability um, to have to deal with the spicy meatball, as they say. Good ranged poke damage, and of course comes with that knockup. Knockups being the best form of CC in Smite because they are not affected by DR and they can only be preemptively beat. So for that level order on Vulcan, we are going to be a 4, 1, a 3, a 2. So we're going to get our ultimate whenever we can. Our ultimate is going to increase that damage by a lot. Um, Vulcan ult does do more damage the farther away you use it, but for those that haven't played Vulcan in a long time, you might not know, uh, they actually had buffed it a while back. The rocket used to start at 50% strength and then increase the further that it traveled from Vulcan, but it actually starts at 75% strength now, uh, which means that using it like point blank on your feet will still do a lot of its damage and you do not have to constantly um, go for those big YOLO ulties down the lane that take a long time to go off. In fact, I would recommend not um, going for max distance Vulcan ults if you can help it and mostly trying to do um, closer to medium ranged ults because if you can hit it more consistently, that's way better um, than getting that random big ulti. It can do a lot of damage just using it in a little bit more boring way. Then of course you level up your one, just gotta lower the cooldown as well as increase the damage, which is fantastic. Really, really low cooldown ability, um, which is going to matter for us a lot um, as we get into the late game. 
Then we rank up our three for the damage and finally our turret for the damage. We're mostly going to be using our turret um, to tank camps and stuff for us. So a lot of the time you'll see me throw down like a turret at a um, red buff or something. Let it go ahead and hit the red buff. So that way... I'll get left lane. Enemy ultimate down. So that way it is actually tanking the red buff for me and I don't even really have to worry about it Don't take any uh, Damage from it. I can use it on the mid camps all that good stuff. That's kind of its main use um, Is gonna be just to tank oh, camps man, for us. It can sucks. give us a, a little bit of extra damage on gods But for the most part we're gonna be relying on our ulti 3-1 little combo uh, to actually kill those guys. I'm gonna a little ulti more point blank here. Not quite gonna hit him, but it is actually gonna force him to go for kind of a uke, which is gonna allow me to get close enough to go ahead and grab that first blood or first blooded. Now, a Pele has shown up, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock her away from me. Throw down a little ward here behind myself. I see that he's going a different way, so I'm gonna start running myself this way. See if I can't get around. I'm not gonna be able to. Pele's already uh, got her boots finished. And he's a Pele, so there is no escaping that without my jungler there with me. Gonna be grabbing our uh, shoes of focus here and working ourselves into that spear of desolation. Pretty standard on the mage build start. You could go um, the sands of time on Vulcan um, to get a little bit more CDR early, but um, two problems with that. One, Vulcan's wave clear, as we mentioned, is not the best. Uh, the conduit gem is going to help you a lot with the early game clear. Um, so you don't get totally pushed out of the uh, lane. And also, in the late game, one of the things that actually makes uh, Vulcan so um, decent, actually, in the late game, compared to his more early mid game, is the gem of focus. He works really well with Gem of Focus. Um, Vulcan's strength in the late game is that he actually does become kind of hard to kill, even though he doesn't have a real getaway skill. Um, and that is actually because of his passive, which you can combine with some other movements. Um, so when Vulcan actually hits somebody, he's going to gain 15% movement and MP5. The MP5 isn't really relevant in the late game. It's more relevant in the early game. Um, but in the late game, that 15%, we're going to stack up with our uh, Karen's coin and the gem of focus. And it'll make us a pretty hard target actually to kill. To you can become very slippery on Vulcan very fast. We are also, of course, looking uh, for CDR on Vulcan as well. If you want to get the cooldown boots, that's fine. I find that I like the little bit of extra damage from the power boots right now, not to mention that little life steal uh, has come in clutch and saved me quite a few times. But... There's nothing wrong necessarily uh, with getting that uh, CDR boots to combine with the Spear of Desolation so you get that early 20% CDR. We do want to be um, closer to capped CDR than farther away. Vulcan uh, definitely benefits pretty highly from that CDR. It's a little weird because his one has uh, such a low cooldown and it is your main ability. So it's a little bit weird for stacking the CDR with it, but especially something like a Spear of Desolation, which gives you that flat CDR reduction, it means that you can sometimes basically just backfire and then use backfire immediately again, which is really nice to be able to oh, double man, backfire. Um, you get some additional CDR on top of that and you basically can double backfire anyway. It's also gonna be your only real form of that self peel. You hit that backfire, it backs you up a little bit. And so if you can get down a lower cooldown, you can just kind of keep backfiring and backfiring and backfiring and backfiring your way from all of the people that are going to try to eat you alive. So 
So on Vulcan, the most important combo that you have is three and then one. That is going to be your standard combo that you're going to be using over and over and over and over again. It's going to be used both aggressively without getting too technical and defensively. So not only are you going to throw out your three for the knockup to help you hit your backfire so you can't miss it. Holy shit, you're on fire. You're also going to be using your three and your one as a defensive ability. Throwing down that three on top of yourself, and then your one as that backfire to get a little distance between you and the enemy. Now, I see an Isa over here. I'm actually going to ulti right there. I think he might go over that way. Oh, it looks like he was so close. The Capri just couldn't quite get hands on him, it seems, beforehand. Should be able to follow the little turret shot right there, saving my meatball for a little bit of peel. Going to do a little 3 1 and take myself over to that right hand side. Just get me away from that Erlang. So your meatball is very often gonna go ahead and just be used on yourself. Because you're just trying to peel off melee characters. Another thing that you should know is that pretty much all of Vulcan's abilities go through walls. A lot of people don't realize that the backfire does go through walls. Um, so you can go ahead and smash people with them, which means walls are your friend. Your ulti goes through walls. Your three and your one will go through walls. Your two does not actually um, shoot through walls. So you're going to have to use your turret the old fashioned way. Got a Pele coming towards us. It's going to hover on my three over my body just in case he's going to go for it. And he is not. Isa walks up to the wave, give him a little love tap there. Sorry. And then we can continue to back up. So with the Vulcan, in terms of pairings on your team, Vulcan loves a, a little bit of a setup. I'm actually not gonna grab this yet. I'm gonna start working into my Karen's coin and then I'm gonna get myself into a soul gem. Vulcan loves setup. Your ultimate, not the easiest ability in the game to, uh, to a hit. A lot of the times it's actually more dependent oh on the enemy kind of mispositioning themselves uh, than it necessarily is you hitting the ability. Freedom! So if you can get a lot of setup on your team, um, particularly knockups are fantastic, whether it's a Bacchus flop, a Neja ulti, a Kumba ulti, a Kakolan ulti, whatever, those kind of things. Um, will really help you be able to follow up with your ultimate, especially if you're using comms. They communicate out. I'm going to go for the ulti. Fantastic. You get ready. You launch your ult. It's got a little bit of a delay on it. And then you go ahead and smash them. So RDO has just used her dash. I'm going to go ahead around this wall. I hit him with a little three combo. I know those dash is down, so I'm kind of using the ulti for a little bit of a zoning right here. It looks like he's just going to go ahead and continue to yellow himself right on through that. It's actually a pretty fast little RDO, but we should be able to pick him up regardless. Use my three to knock up the RDO right after he comes out of the Cabri's mouth. Good old Pele got smashed by that ulti, but won't be enough to actually grab the kill. Now, Isa's getting a little aggressive right here. He's got to be a little careful. Got to pop my beads and try to get myself away from this Erlang. Might not be able to. Really good Capri ult actually going to keep me alive for a second. Not sure if I'm able to get out of this one. Try to use my backfire pointing in the direction that I want to go. Turn around my turret behind me so I can continue to get that bonus movement speed. Now I'm actually going to turn around onto this Izanami, but my Kakulin ran right past him. That was weird. Guess he went over and got the kill on the east side right there, but he definitely ran right past the Izanami. Good Capriol is going to help keep us not alive because there's going to be a blinking Pele back in the mid lane. Hi, Pele. How are you doing? Going to get ourselves our Aegis, of course, with our beads and continue to work on our Karen's coin to help with that movement speed. We still got about, give or take, another 13-ish minutes until we start to really get the Vulcan online right now. So outside of the setup on your own team, as far as the gods on the enemy team that you don't want to go against, um, there's kind of a lot, to be honest. Um, but as far as the big no-nos, um, cripples are really, really annoying for you. Your main damage source is your backfire. This is a movement ability. So that means that if you go ahead and are Ares chained, you can't use your main damaging ability. 
um, that is a disaster for you. Not being able to use your main damaging ability as a mage uh, kind of kills the whole point of being a mage. The other thing that is really annoying for you is people that have knock up immunities. Knock up immunities are going to be the bane of your existence because your only real form of self peel is to throw down your meatball on top of yourself and then hope that gets them off you. So a Fenrir is the bane of your existence because they are going to brutalize you and brutalize is knock up immune. Your backfire is a little dash, not a leap. It doesn't get him off, so all you can do is throw down an ulti on yourself and then hope he doesn't really easily just jump over your ulti that has a very long time before it goes off. Anybody else that has a lot of knockup immunities or immunities in general is also going to provide a lot of problems for you. Uh, a Robin, same kind of concept. He avoids your self peel very easily. I'm going to throw down a turret right here. I don't even have to follow up with my ultimate. She's probably going to be dead by the time she comes down. And she is. So watch out for cripples. Watch out for immunities. And watch out for finally walls. Vulcan has a lot of things to worry about. There's a reason why he's not very meta. Uh, walls will wreck your day. You've got no way to get around them. Very tiny little segments in the jungle. Uh, so a Ymir wall, a Kabrakan wall, a Thor wall, all of these are going to uh, bring a lot of pain to the Vulcan train. So you got to be careful with all of that stuff as well. So a lot of things to be looking out for uh, when you're going to be picking that Vulcan. Going to head over here towards the Scorpion. I'm going to go ahead and let that turret start taking it. So the scorpion goes over to the turret first, buys me a little bit of time. I take a couple less auto. Now our damage is starting to get a little decent on Vulcan. We're not to uh, the point where I'm com comfortable yet, but uh, every progressive minute that passes is basically good for us. A little Kepri ulti right there. Excuse me, a little Kepri pluck for my Vulcan ulti. And that's the combination that you're looking for on Vulcan. He goes ahead and plucks. I don't have to worry about how long it's gonna take in order to hit my ulti, I just get to go ahead and throw it right on down. For our objective secure, you're gonna want a three, and then one right when that uh, meatball is gonna hit. So you three, you wait just a tiny itty bitty moment, then you go ahead and throw down that one. If you want even bigger secure, um, like if you have your uh, ultimate up, you can actually go ahead and ulti, and then three one at the same time in your ultimate your three and your one will basically all hit at the exact same time you can combine those uh to be all at once for the super objective secure uh if you were doing like a fire giant or something he uh, volgan has very good objective secure that's definitely a strength of his very big objective secure very big objective stealing as well tends to be very dangerous to try to sneak an objective or something while there is a Vulcan in the game because he can throw an ulti from a long distance, right? Very long distance. Gonna get rid of this ward real quick. Turn up for some bonus damage. Boop. A little bit of damage in there because if I'm trying to steal this fire giant, I mean, I can ulti it from all the way back here very easily. Not even, not even a hard task. Enemies in left lane. Ultimate is ready. Ultimate I've got a feeling ready. he said he's going to try to path in right over here. So I'm going to go get ready. Throw down a little meatball. He is trying to path in here. He was just a little bit late. So my meatball is going to knock him back towards his tower instead of away from it. So my main job as Vulcan is not usually to 100 to 0 somebody right now. It's just to poke somebody. My job is to be very annoying. Get people down in their HP. Like right there, he's down to half HP. That is fantastic. He's going to mid lane. I'm actually going to ulti for that. It's going to be a pretty YOLO ult. It's not going to hit him, but it is going to force him to actually cut back into the jungle towards our team, which is hopefully going to be enough to grab the kill. Now, I got to be very careful with this Pele. Going to try to knock him away from me. See if I can't continue to use my backfire to get away. Try to dodge the ESAT spirit ball 
as well. So ship. far, so good. I don't know if he has his blink up or not. I'm going to assume that he does. I'm going to throw down a little turret just to kind of be a body blocker there for me. <clears throat> and then discourage him from coming my way. So a lot of the game, <laughs> as Vulcan, is going to be spent doing exactly what we just did which is mostly running away and peeling for yourself. Now, you can still get a lot of damage off while you're doing this, right? Because you're using your turret, your three, and your backfire all to kind of self-peel for yourself. So you can end up being decently squirrely. He actually is like a worse version of... Um, Morgana in that matter where Morgana doesn't really have a getaway skill but she's so hard to kill because everything can kind of factor in and be a little bit of its own uh, getaway ability not gonna stand myself around that fire giant actually because I am much uh, too low go down the ulti and the meatball have those hit at about the same time and secure that fire giant Soul Jam Online, we've got ourselves 20% CDR. We're going to have the bonus movement speed from the Karen's coin. And now I'm going to start working myself into that staff of Mirrodin. Plus our red pot is going to give us 40% CDR. We're going to have 30% pen. And staff of Mirrodin is going to let us double backfire. Which is going to increase the chances that we live significantly. Being able to ult the on top of ourselves and then backfire, backfire actually makes it pretty much a getaway skill. Once you double the length of backfire, it's actually kind of like having a dash. So when you're running away from gods on Vulcan, which you're going to be doing a lot, you need to make sure that you're doing a couple of things. One, set the turret in the way that you are running away, not in the way that the enemy is. So if I am running away from somebody, like if I'm running away from the minions right now, like, ah, the minions are going to kill me. I throw down the turret like this. So that way, as they go to chase me, that turret is going to shoot them a couple of times. And it is going to give me the 15% movement bonus. Then you want to make sure that you are utilizing your three to knock the enemy, hopefully, in the opposite direction of where you're running. Remember that this is uh, directional, so if you hit them, um, whatever way they are off-center is the way that they will be knocked Attack up. Middle lane. And then, of course, you want to make sure that you're turning around in order to use your backfire. So if I'm getting chased by these minions, I want to turn around and use my backfire, because one, I don't want to backfire myself into the enemy, but two, it's going to take me a little bit farther away. Give me that reproc on my bonus movement speed and help me get out of a bad situation. Now I'm just going to be poke, poke, poking. I've got my team going in. There's the Kakolino. So we're going to be able to follow up with a really nice Volcano right on top of them. Now they've got a Pele all the way back here. I've got my three just to kind of use on myself. And I'm just going to be self peeling right now to get this Pele off of me. We might be able to go for the Titan right here. It's actually a little risky, but we do have a Vulcan, which is a, a lot uh, of damage. So we can probably put this one away. I don't have my ultimate up. We're gonna have to make sure we're actually just keeping the uh, keep it alive here. We are gonna be able to keep keep it alive. And that means that we will be able to put that game away. So on the Vulcan, you're going to be self-peeling a lot for yourself. Make sure you're utilizing that meatball right on top of yourself and those backfires to get yourself away from your opponent. Don't try to go for the big YOLO ultimate. You're much better going for medium range, more consistent, better chance to hit ultis, particularly off of um, <laughs> CC that your team is utilizing. So try to use it as a follow-up skill the way that you would, you know, use a raw ultimate or something of that sort, guys. And that is our Vulcan, a mid lane guide. Thank you for supporting the Twitchiest community. If you'd like to see more videos, make sure you subscribe to the channel and always hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of the upcoming videos. Thank you for all your support and have a twitching day, y'all.